Today we are going to be making a tiramisuki, which is a tiramisu cookie. So I called it tiramisuki. I think it's a great name. It's a really yummy cookie, I have to say. Welcome back everybody. This is Marilyn from Rosano's Casa. Today we're going to be baking. It is Christmas time, so I love baking at this time of the year because nine times out of ten, the gifts that you receive from me are baked goods because we all have everything we need. Let's be honest. Um, so I just like to make a bunch of cookies or desserts, um, have them in the freezer ready to go and gift them to people as I see them along the way in a cute little box. and Everyone enjoys them. So anyway, so we are going to be making a tiramisuki, which is basically um, a tiramisu cookie. Both the elements that I love in a cookie um, as well as a tiramisu and we're making it into a, into a cookie, which is amazing. So the cookie itself is a soft cookie. So think of like Subway cookie. It is a soft cookie. It is delicious. It's not a hard, crunchy, crumbly, short bready cookie at all. So it's a soft cookie. It's very similar to my salted, tiny chocolate chip cookies. So all these, these recipes are in my Sweets and Treats ebook that you can purchase online on my website and I'll link it in the show, show notes below. Um, so it's a soft cookie. Um, that has beautiful elements in it. There is brown sugar, um, obviously butter, eggs, vanilla, and we're going to add some ground coffee to this as well as some frangelico. So I like to use frangelico in my tiramisu, um, but you could definitely just use masala, you could use Bailey's, or you could leave it out completely. It won't, it won't affect the recipe at all um, if you leave alcohol out. Um, will it affect kids eating it? My kids ate it. The alcohol is basically evaporated or anything like when cooking so I don't know and they didn't they slept pretty good that night no, I'm just joking I'm just joking anyway so you can leave that element out and then the icing on top is a mascarpone icing uh, which is beautiful so we're going to mix some mascarpone some cream um, some icing sugar together and we are going to pipe that on top of the cookie and add some crushed hazelnuts and dark cacao to it so it is a decadent it's a loaded kind of cookie it, if you are sweet tooth this is for you for me personally I'm more like a choc chip cookie girl but I 100% think that this is a beautiful cookie um like definitely anyway if you're going to make this ahead of time to freeze I get ahead of myself I like to explain the whole thing at first you can fast forward this part but if you are going to make this ahead of time um and you are curious whether to freeze it I would highly suggest that you freeze the cookie and then probably ice them after they've defrosted and you're going to give them. Um, you can freeze the icing in this. The only thing that will happen, it won't be off or anything, but it will just go a bit grainy. Um, that's the only thing. So texturally it might change a bit, but flavor-wise, still perfect. Anyway, now that that's all out of the way, let's flip the camera around. Let's get straight into baking. Um, and, yeah, very easy. Anyway, all right. <laughs> anything else, Marilyn? <laughs> all right. Ingredients wise, uh, we have flour, just plain flour. You could get the biscuit flour, but I'm just using plain all purpose flour. There's salt and baking powder in there because I'm going to whisk that together. We have some ground coffee. You can use instant, whatever you have at hand. We have three eggs at room temperature. Always get your eggs at room temperature just so that the cookie doesn't go tough and hard. Um, brown sugar, unsalted butter. So I've pre-measured all this. The icing sugar is not till later for the for the topping, for the frosting, as well as mascarpone and cream. And we have vanilla bean and frangelico. And then I haven't added in here the crushed hazelnuts that is going to add a little bit of a texture element to the, to the cookie itself. That's why I like to serve crushed hazelnuts. Um, and that's how I like to also finish off my tiramisu, my traditional tiramisu with some crushed hazelnuts because it complements the frangelico really, really well and dark cacao. Anyway, let's get, let's get baking. Like all good things, we're going to start off with some brown sugar. So right, put that into a stand mixer with a paddle attachment or you could just do this in a bowl with hand beaters. Your butter, Pop that in. We're going to beat that for about a minute or so on medium speed. So it is really important that the butter is softened. Um, if it's too cold, it is not going to cream at all. It's going to be very, very hard. So you can zap it for a couple of seconds in the microwave if you're impatient. Um, but anyway, I like to leave it out for a few hours just to soften up. So that's first thing. And also while this is happening, preheat your oven at 170 degrees Celsius. So as you can see, it is nice. Fluffy, so I'm just going to scrape down the edges as such. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm going to add in the vanilla bean paste and the eggs one at a time. So um, I feel like vanilla bean paste is like the garlic in baking. <laughs> so add in one egg at a time. Just mix it a little bit just so it's incorporated and then we'll come back with the next step. I'm going to actually add in the frangelico now and then we're going to add in our dry ingredients. So we have our flour, salt, baking powder. I'm going to add in the ground coffee and I'm going to just whisk. This is how I whisk. I learned this from Martha Stewart when I was like 10 or something and I thought it was like the most genius thing ever um, rather than having to put it through another set because I hate doing that, honestly. And then we're just going to add that into the stand mixer with the wet ingredients slowly you don't want to overbeat it do not put this on high speed at all you will get tough cookies so we'll add that in literally on mix it through on low speed just until it's incorporated scrape down the edge And that is that. So what we're going to do is we are going to cover this bowl and put it in the fridge and let it chill for one hour. Reason being is because if we bake it, I just found that when I baked it straight away from the bowl, the cookies completely flattened. So I'm just going to chill it one hour. You can make this ahead of time and chill it overnight. You just have to take it out of the fridge maybe a couple of hours before you go to bake it because you don't want it too hard. Then, while that's chilling, we'll make our icing um, and then bake these bad boys up. You're going to love that cookie dough, if you love cookie dough. What I love about KitchenAid, this attachment comes with a lid. How good is that? All right, so into the fridge, one hour, and then we'll come back. I'll clean up because it's giving me anxiety, and we'll make the icing. Let's get started on the icing. So I've got icing sugar. I'm gonna pop that into the bowl. Oh my gosh, it's been very humid here. So I feel like everything is sticky. And then we've got the air on. So we're gonna add the icing sugar. We're gonna add cream. Okay. We're gonna add mascarpone. I love mascarpone. I know some people use cream cheese. It's not the same in my opinion. But if you want, you could replace it with cream cheese if you prefer that. Nothing beats it. So I'm literally going to just whisk this until it is combined and put it into a piping bag. I've just got a jar and I'm, I, I like to use these disposable piping bags because then I can just chuck it right after. Okay, so I've just got a jar, which I haven't even taken the label off, um, and placed it in that. So then I'm just gonna place the icing into the piping bag and I'll probably leave it in the fridge to chill for a little bit until the cookies have completely baked, chilled and then we'll ice it together. We have taken the cookie dough out of the fridge. Very clumsy. We're going to roll, this gets you about 15, 15 cookies. So three tablespoon balls, which is a ice cream scoop and I am going to only bake three at a time three at a time purely because oh my gosh I stopped that one <laughs> okay back again let's pretend that didn't happen um, three at a time because they will expand so I'm just gonna put three on each tray and that's it give them a bake about 12 minutes I'll show you what they look like when they come out. Fresh out of the oven. All right, so you want the batter to definitely be chilled before you scoop it so that it can um, just stay like perfectly shaped. Because there was one, sorry, I've got the hiccups, um, <clears throat> that was kind of like on the tail end of the batch and the batter was softened and it kind of oozed a little bit. But I just get a large cookie cutter or a bowl and while it's warm out of the oven I just kind of circulate the bowl on top to reshape it so there's nothing wrong with it it's just 
much as perfect as those. So let us ice. So piping bag, you can put a large round nozzle. I'm not even going to put a nozzle, to be honest. We're not perfectly baking. Um, and then I'm just going to ice it on top as such. Now, if you let this chill a little bit more, it will come out a bit neater. So I'm just kind of icing it and swirling it at the same time like that. I'm going to just take a little bit of dark cacao, cocoa, cacao, and sprinkle a bit of that. I like to just cover half the cookie as such. Guys, this is just a beautiful, messy, and of course I was out of crushed hazelnuts, but I'm using just hazelnut meal here, but you definitely want some roughly chopped hazelnuts and that will complement the frangelico inside. And there you have it. You have a tiramisuki. This is gorgeous. Move over to the light a little bit. Um, perfect cookie, great for gifting. If you were to um, want to make this to gift to someone, um, I would definitely suggest freezing the cookie and then icing them afterwards so they're fresh. But this is great. They'll last in the fridge for about three, five, three days. Um, anyway, let's crack one open and have a look. Anyway, there she is. Still a bit too warm. Hope you like it. Hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you give it a go and what you think. And if you use a different cup of alcohol, we'll leave it out. Um, but apart from that, cheers. Enjoy. You can get the recipe in my Spits and Treats ebook. I will link it up in the show notes. But until next week, bye.